Vintage Kitty Takanawa. She is by turns gracious. I'm loving every moment of it. You know, it's sort of one of the happiest times of my life now. Grumpy and urgent. I don't suffer fools and I don't I don't waste time. And astonishingly frank. I think that the, the best thing I could have done to have been a better parent was to give up my career, yes. I should have. It's a chilly winter's evening and gathered at the home of millionaire philanthropist Sir James Wallace, our Auckland's opera crowd, while Dame Kitty charms the guests downstairs. Upstairs, her 22-year-old protege, Kawati Waitford, with a little bit of help, prepares to enthrall them. They're coming through by the dozen, and we have to select out the um, extremely talented ones. Got it. Uh, this Whangarei baritone has been handpicked by Dame Kitty's foundation. All going well, he'll become a star, continuing the diva's opera legacy. This is now Dame Kitty's passion. Where once it was all about her career, now it's about her students. I just sort of want exceptional talent. Some that sort of absolutely knock your socks off. And he has it. Next month, Kawati Waitford will begin study at the International Academy of Voice in Cardiff. He learns very quickly and um, he learns the sort of the bad side and the sad side of the things that he, he shouldn't be doing. And uh, that's part of my um, mentoring. That well, I'm, what's the bad and the sad part? Of that's it? for me to know and for you not to. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just croon it. Just don't try and sing it. Just croon it. See that to give me easy. It's well. been nine years. The Kitty the Kanawa Foundation has supported twelve students. Yes. When, you, when you go for it, make sure you you've done it. You're there before before it, it, before it happens. Helping them navigate the highs okay. and the lows of a competitive world Dame Kitty knows only too well. When, when I go up to there, that's I tend to. That's when I go. Use the R. <coughs> Use the R up there. I was like on the freight train, you know, it, it, and everyone just had to jump on the freight train with me for those 30 years or whatever it was. There's a big rush to get to the other end of the day. Do you like it like that? <laughs> I don't think so. But I don't seem to be um, slowing down. My hand, please me. I fed my hand on the yonder tree. On oh, the yonder tree. Make sure you've got to be American here. It's got to sound, it's a little bit too calculated. It's, it's just too good. It's a huge opportunity to learn from this short, sharp, focused and demanding diva a task neither take lightly. You know, it's been said of her that she's a tough taskmaster. Um, and, I, you know, I think she would never have got to where she is and had done the things she, she has if she and ha had that complete utter dis discipline. So you support your students, but you're tough on them too, aren't you? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, I, sometimes I just have to stand back and say, look, stop being so close. very important part is not to be, be too close. What do you mean by that? Well, you can love them, love them a little bit too much. And what does that mean? Well, I just sometimes give in, you know, and, and let them get away with something, and that's, that's not what I want to do. Because it didn't happen to me. No one gave in to me, and no one let me get away with anything, so I've got to make sure I don't let that happen. Nineteen sixty-six, a grand farewell concert at Wellington's Town Hall. But the young Kitty had little idea of what lay ahead in London.
And now she wants to prepare her students for the harsh reality, the one she went through. I was very, very, very unhappy. I missed everything about home as you would. And uh, it, it, it's gut-wrenching because you, I, I look back at that 1966 to 1967 and I think how sad I was. And every time I saw the, the stream of a plane, you know, I, it just broke my heart because I couldn't afford to be on it. Coming up, Dame Kitty is back in the recording studio. Could it be the last time? about her failures and her fiery reputation. I do have a, a short fuse and I, I go at a, you know, a rate of knots because I, I can't see that uh, I should be wasting time. Take your music, whoever this is. Own your music and then move the stands, please. It's a big day. Dame Kitty is working with the backing choir on a video to go with her new album, Wayata. And as usual, she's moving at a rate of knots. Isn't it alright? Okay. Bring the stands back. Bring the stands back. Bring the stands Just back. Just the stands. Unafraid to pull the shots. Stop, stop, stop. They're way out. Come on. You know how this goes. Can you hear the beats? Unafraid to call it as she sees it. You must keep up with it because you're going to be behind. It's a bit lazy. So can you a lot of people are scared you know, of you. Know. I was a bit nervous to meet you, to be honest. A lot of people that knew that I was coming to meet you said, oh, she's tough. Are you making up things? Come on. No. Of course you are. Rubbish. No. Rubbish. No. <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. That's what people say. Well, then what's to, be fe what's to be feared? Come on. What's fearful? I guess I thought you might say, bugger off. <laughs> I mean, you're very tough, you're intimidating, you're a strong woman, and I think... A lot of people find that no, I scary. No, I don't think I'm strong. I think I'm very determined. I think I'm very. I have very good focus, but uh, I don't suffer fools, and I don't. I don't waste time. I mean, if, if I'm standing in some on the street corner, I think this is a waste of time. But I don't do nothing. I can't stand doing nothing. <laughs> Dame Kelly will record 16 tracks with the renowned Kiwi pianist and producer Carl Doy. The album Waiata is a chance to connect with a heritage she's had a delicate relationship with and famously seemed to fall out with when she declared too many Māori welfare dependent. I'm proud of being Māori. I was never brought up to be Māori, that was the problem. You know, I, I don't know if you realise, way back in 1966, they only just started... Um, having Māori in schools. Do you feel like you missed out? I missed out on speaking Māori. I would have loved to have spoken Māori. I think it would have been very, very important. On this, her second album of Māori songs, respected actor George Henare is her guide. A steadying hand with te reo pronunciation. This is just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, that's it's a lovely tune. Well, I'm glad. Who chose this? Nothing but the best. You know. Uh, How do you enjoy the recording okay. process? Well, I've done lot, so many recordings, and I love it. It's fun, especially you know, with someone like Carl, who's done fantastic orchestrations. Is it your last album? Um, maybe not. I don't know. There's a lot of talk around lately about this notion of you retiring. Is that I mean, a possibility? The, the press retire me. They retire me on a regular basis. It bothers you? Well, it bothers me that they, they don't give me a chance to answer or say, no, 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 not this year. No, no, not, not next year either. Oh, no, I'm not thinking about that. Now I'm not thinking about it yet. Well, what is the answer? There isn't. I, I, I don't want to retire. What does retirement mean to you? There's no retirement. There's no last. There's no end unless there's death. There's only death in taxes. That's all there is left. And when that happens, you bring out the box, pay the taxes or not, and get in the box and die. But Dame 
when Kitty does concede, opera will now be rare. From now on, expect more concerts, recordings, and mentoring. Even as she approaches a fairly considerable milestone. Your next birthday, you'll be 70. How does that sit with you? Not very well. <laughs> Why not? Well, would you want to be 70? I think if I'd led a life like you have, I would be probably <laughs> pretty proud of myself <laughs> and think I deserved 70. 70, I thought, how, how did I get from there to here? It's age 70, but I suppose you do. It has been a career of incredible peaks and, it seems, many unseen lows. A huge career, and it's really been, it's been hard, it's a hard work career, it's, it's, I've really worked at it, um, because I had no other choice, you know, I had teachers that drove me and drove me and drove me, and sometimes I thought it was almost relentless how hard I was pushed. So is this where the Dane's steely focus and infamous impatience stems from, or is it something else? I love your face when you talk about your parents. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just they're, they're it. Yeah, they're, they were fun. They were fun. They were wonderful people. Mel and Tom Tekanawa. They adopted Gisborne-born Kitty when she was just a baby. I kept on saying to my children, you know, I said, but for my parents, none of us would be here. We wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't have this amazing life. I wouldn't have the happiness I've even got today for the sacrifices of my parents. And they did. They sacrificed everything. I had incredible grounding through my parents. Even though my mother was tough, she was tough for all the right reasons. And, of course, my father was the biggest softy. But I think through my parents, they gave me that incredible strength of being able to say to somebody, you know, really bugger off if I felt like it. Because I had that, that, that grounding in, in my, my upbringing. Dame Keddie adopted two children herself. But if there has been a failing in this stellar life, perhaps it's this. I would love to have been a better parent, but I was a working parent, and it was really, really tough. What would you have done differently? Um, well, I, I suppose what I should have done was give up my career and not do it. That would have been the thing that I should have done. Did you ever consider doing that? I don't think I had a chance to give it up. I, I'm, I don't even think I thought about it. I had a diary of five years. I thought, oh, God. And every time I got to New Year, I used to go and sink in, in, into the bed and say, no, put the pillow over my head and think, no, here comes another year of it. You know, one of the things you've said that I think would surprise a lot of people is that it just felt like a freight train coming all the time. You put a pillow over your head and think, oh, <laughs> another year of this. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's a terrible thing to think that our, you know, legendary kitty went through such tough times. I, I don't think people would really understand that. I know, and, and also I wouldn't want them to understand it. I wouldn't want it to sort of be moaning and groaning about something that was, you know, I, I, I worked on this career, I, I did incredible things in it, and, um, and everyone's incredibly proud of me. A lot of young singers are coming to, to England because of me, and, and a lot of, I've inspired hopefully an awful lot of people. So I wouldn't regret any of that. Is it what you want for your students? Yes. Yeah. You want them on that freight train? I'd like it. Yes. It may be a freight train, but it's driven Dame Kitty to incredible success. The sort she wants to share, and the sort she's not ready to let go of just yet. Will you ever stop singing? Um, most, probably. most probably, but not today. Why might you stop singing, do you think? Um, I don't know. Just because I don't want to. <laughs>